Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Odigi Ochi. Welcome. This broadcast has been streamed live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and other social media handles displayed on your screen. The Federal Executive Council at its meeting this Wednesday observed a minute silence in honor of Nigeria's First Minister of Aviation, Mbazuliki Amichi who died on Tuesday, 1st of November, at the age of 93. The late aviation minister, who hailed from Uko village in Nnewi South, local government area of Anambra State, was described as a nationalist who made tremendous contributions to the growth of the aviation industry in the country. Until his passing on, he was said to be the only surviving member of the Nnamdi Azikiwe movement. Few members of the Federal Executive Council were physically present at the meeting with others joining via Zoom. The meeting is being presided over, was being presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The current trend in the global economy, climate change and the Ukrainian conflict all present opportunities for closer ties among developing economies, especially in refocusing attention on trade and energy access for the benefits of the people. Vice President Yemi Oshimba just stated this when he received in audience a Nigerian-born Secretary General of the D8 organization, Ambassador Isiaka Imam. Speaking on the need for closer ties among developing countries such as those in the D8, the Vice President said this is a very important time for member countries to really focus on the critical issues of trade and energy. Nigeria offers great prospects for expanding trade among the D8 members, Vice President Oshimbadu explains, and urged members to look at how to use Nigeria as a point to take off from and some kind of entryway into the African free trade zones. On Nigeria's advocacy for a just transition to net zero, the Vice President urged the D8 to join in the campaign, explaining that the advocacy in the area of energy access is an important consideration in the whole campaign towards net zero and says it is possible for the DA to take it up because all the countries are faced with more or less the same sort of challenges. Vice President Oshibajo commended the renewed vigor by the present Secretariat of the DA to give it a new direction and create better opportunities that will benefit member countries. Ambassador Insiaka Imam remarked that there is a deliberate effort to reinvigorate trade among member countries in the new direction of the D8, especially improving trade volumes from $121 billion to a new target of about $500 billion, billion by 2030. He added that plans were underway to establish a D8 MSME Center in Abuja as part of efforts to boost trade by building capacity among MSMEs in member countries, noting that the center, if realized, will be a game changer for members to enhance their capacity and training of MSMEs in branding and quality control. Nigeria is a member of the D8, which is an organization for development cooperation among eight developing countries in comprising Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Pakistan, and Turkey. The Ministry of Health has so far received 38.5 billion Naira for the 2022 Basic Health Care Provision Fund, which will increase the National Health Insurance Act beneficiaries with 820,000. Adequate implementation of health intervention programs resonated at the 2023 Budget Defense Session of the Senate Committee on Health. Ignatia Sunkwa reports on this and other Budget Defense Sessions at the Senate. 
Minister of Health Dr. Osage Ehanira, in company of management staff of the ministry, appeared before the Senate Committee on Health to defend the 2023 budget of 326.3 billion naira. The committee was particularly interested in knowing the status of the Basic Health Care Provision Fund and the Cancer Fund. And then you appointed one hospital part with protocols. Where are we now? How many patients are benefited? How much of the fund has been utilized? And with your permission, I would like to start with the Basic Health Care Provision Fund. Right. And as a program uh, officer here to give exactly those details you have requested. The NHIS gateway, the 14 billion that has been allocated to NHIS gateway, will increase our the number of enrollees to 1.1 million enrollees. At the National Assembly Joint Committee on Power, the minister defended the 239.5 billion naira allocated to the Ministry of Power and its agencies for the 2023 fiscal year with explanations of major projects. Uh, Honorable Minister, I will start with the Kaduna yes. uh, gas uh, the plant. The power plant. You haven't told us the percentage of completion that we have been funding that uh, year in, year out. 82% uh, completion. We have been talking with um, uh, some the Minister of State for Education, Goodluck Opia, defended the main ministry's 2023 budget of 99 billion naira before the Senate Committee on Basic and Secondary Education. The budget defense by the Minister of Defense, Bashiri Magashi, before the Senate Committee on Defense was suspended by the committee, which insisted on the resuscitation of the largest ship in the fleet of the Nigerian Navy, NNS Aradu. And then we give her that debt for the budget defense. Chief of Army Staff Major General Farouk Yahya defended the 2022 yeah. budget before the Senate Committee on Army from the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. The Federal High Court of Nigeria has constituted a special task force of, of judges to hear and determine all pre election cases filed, filed before it within four weeks. A statement by the Assistant Director Information of the Court, Catherine Christopher, says the Chief Judge of the Court, Justice John Tehem Batsoho, deems it necessary to designate a team of judges following the large volume of pre-election cases that have flooded the court. Judges who are members of the task force will suspend all regular cases in their respective courts due to the urgency of the electoral cases, which are time-bound. Police Affairs Minister Mohammed Megari Dangyadi is confident personnel of the force will perform excellently in the 2023 general elections based on the rating from Nigerians in the Ocean Governorship polls. He expressed the confidence at the ongoing Senior Police Officers Conference on Election Security in Owere, Imo State. Francis Form reports. In that direction. The minister reminded the senior police officers of the Buhari administration's determination to conduct a free, fair and credible elections in 2023, while advising them to remain apolitical and uphold the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Electoral Act. We cannot do it alone. We have to have the support and cooperation of everybody, particularly the politicians. So, so my prayer and my wish is for the politicians to work together with our policemen and all other security agencies to ensure that uh, we provide a free and fair election. Police will assist in providing security, but the empire still remains INEC, and we are collaborating with them seriously uh, to ensure that whatever they must have uh, laid out as guides, as procedure, as rules and regulation to be adhered to, to get the games played according to the rules, is what we want to ensure. Nigerians expect a lot from you. Please don't disappoint them. The police affairs minister told the participating officers from Owere, the Imo state capital, Francis from NTN News. The need to strengthen the criminal justice system in Africa takes center stage again as stakeholders converge on Abuja to strategize on how to ensure that speedy trials are attained. 
Omega Marachi could tell us more from the stakeholders' engagement. Issues bordering on the effective implementation of criminal justice system has been a concern to many, particularly jurists and other ministers in the Temple of Justice. Though the government, as the major enabler, is partnering with others in the sector to promote easy access to justice, this engagement is one of such forums aimed at strengthening the pillars of a just, equitable society through the rule of law. To learn from each other, we have people here from Ghana, from Rwanda, from Kenya, from Uganda, from South Africa. So we want to learn from each other what we need to do to have progress. And one of the aim of this meeting, as we are discussing, is to share experiences, especially on the right of the accused on speedy tribes holding speedy trials within our criminal justice system. Criminal justice system usually needs a lot of funding because there are so many actors that are involved. And uh, ensuring that in the meantime, those who are uh, charged when there isn't sufficient evidence do not uh, uh, languish unduly waiting for their trial. Minka Marchuku, NT News. Here to Nationwide. Let's join Hingino in Lagos for more reports on nationwide. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Lydia. The social media in recent time have been used to propagate false information and hate speech campaigns against individuals or political parties. This has raised concerns with people calling for an urgent reorientation to the positive views of the medium. Abola de Salami reports. The social media space has become an all commerce affair for various reasons, including information dissemination, content creation, and promotion of products. Most worrisome of the medium is the unregulated pattern, which has caused more panic to the citizenry than good in terms of sharing unverified information, fake news, invasion of privacy, and identity theft. Well, social media and hate speech is one of the major concerns, I think. Um, a lot of times, people need to understand that um, there is a line that you should never cross. Um, the fact that we are able to engage with one another socially does not give us the right to abuse some of those leverages. I mean, yeah, some of those leverages. We're supposed to use it for good. However, people have begun to use all kinds of technology, including the social media platforms, to propagate hate speech, to propagate things that will divide us, which is not good. While some political candidates have engaged the platform more to converse for support in the forthcoming 2023 general elections, the speed at which its campaigns have dominated the medium has generated concerns and worries, which some Nigerians described as undemocratic and unpatriotic. Um, it has also become a veritable platform for dissipation of fake news uh, about political activities. So all sort of things are fabricated, videos, images, words, and are attributed to people that are not necessarily true. Uh, so this is a very negative side. People will always talk negatively about you know, the candidates they don't like. So this is where we need to now verify ourselves what that news is all about. You know, anybody can just go on social media, you know, maybe on Facebook or post a video on TikTok or whatever, and just drop a content without being verified. We will all lose the focus. So uh, it's, 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 it's a work on ourselves that we need to first verify information before sharing it out. As some Nigerians make the social media space a source of information gathering and sharing, political parties, content creators, and vloggers have been admonished so as a matter of responsibility, put only credible information on their handle, devoid of it. In Lagos, Abaladi Salami, NT News. The safety of lives and property can only be guaranteed if citizens collaborate with security agencies in terms of information sharing. The controller, Lagos State Command of the Nigeria Immigration Service, reiterated this while briefing newsmen on the interception of some illegally trafficked migrants. Anuoluakbo Oluatoki, who was there, tells us more. Irregular migration is one of the major security challenges of the modern-day society. Challenges posed by this include 
economic losses, illegal trafficking, as well as security threats such as routine violence, rape, kidnapping, terrorism, and other transborder crimes. In order to effectively tackle this menace, the Nigerian Immigration Service has decided to step up its game. These efforts have led to the interception of the illegal migrants in Lagos State. The Comptroller of the Lagos State Command, Manny Bagiwa, while appreciating Lagos State Government for its support, emphasized that the men of the Nigerian Immigration Service will continue to work assiduously to ensure that illegal migration is dealt with. The State Command of the Nigerian Immigration Service intercepted, apprehended 36 Cameroonian nationals who were irregular migrants on the 23rd of October 2022. They came into the country through the Equan border, Coast River State, in separate batches. They said the feat was achieved in synergy with the Nigeria police and all the security agencies where it charged Lagosians to be more alert. In Lagos, Anoluapo, Uluwa, Toki, NTA News. That's all from the Center of Excellence. Time now for a break, after which Nationwide will continue with Kemi in Ibadan. But do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. <laughs> Welcome to Ibadan. The Team for National Food Security Program, co founded by the Islamic Development Bank, has arrived Quara State for final assessment of indices in preparation for the takeoff of the scheme. The state governor, Abdurrahman Abdurazak, says the state is ready to leverage on agriculture to break the chain of poverty among the people. Raliat Ibrahim has the report. The team comprises officials from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Finance, and the Islamic Development Bank. Kuala State, according to Governor Abdurrahman Abrazak, is prepared for the commencement of the program, including payment of the final counterpart fund in view of its importance in the attainment of food security in the country. In addition to his administration's agricultural master plan, the governor believes the food security program will not only make the state food sufficient, but also help break the chain of poverty among the people. The future for us is agriculture and agro-processing. Food security cannot be attained as long as we continue to look at agriculture from the subsistence level. We must transform from agri-produce to agri-products we must bring production and process it closer. We must look at agro-processing and agro-industrialization. The operation team leader, Javed Khan, believes Nigeria has a lot of potentials that should be harnessed, noting that the project is mostly beneficial to the poor. Nigeria is the, one of the first country who is taking benefit of the food security program that recently IDB Board of Executive Director approved. Kwara State is one of the four states selected for the program in Nigeria with Kano, Kebi and Ekiti being the other three. Raleigh Atibrahim, NTA News. Awareness will aid participation of people living with disabilities in the electoral process. Corresponding to a informal report that such was a gathering by the coalition of like-minded people living with disabilities in Ibadan. As the duty of nation building continues in preparation for the 2023 general elections, people living with disabilities in Oyo State gathered together to reawaken one another to the civic responsibility of voting on election day and its importance. Speakers, especially from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, engaged the participants in an interactive session based on electoral processes. The law has recognized their rights and the law has given them the opportunity for them to have access, for them to vote irrespective of their disability. And that is why we are imploring everybody to take active part in the electionary process, including people living with disability. This is the way by which the democracy will work. Participants were also assured of the provision by the Electoral Act to enable them to perform their civic responsibility freely. 
and they have been trained, they have been educated on how to vote. We are enlightened on how to make good use of our voters' card in order not to make all our efforts be wasted. As people with disability, we organize our people at each local government. We mobilize them to go and get their BBC. Efforts by some major players towards inclusion of persons with disabilities in the society were recognized in Ibadan, Oje Yinka Omali, NCA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Many thanks, Kemi. Nigeria is hosting Security Councils of African Union member states in Abuja to learn and share experiences of peace support operations around the African continent. Salwa Khalil Ibrahim reports. For two decades, the African continent has been deploying special forces for peace operations on the continent, most of which have recorded remarkable successes, but not without challenges. We have to look at that uh, very, very, very critically and also to realize that nobody can save the African continent but ourselves. With 27 peace support operations and Nigeria at the forefront, the Peace and Security Council of the African Union is now reviewing its operations through lessons learned forums like this to reinforce response mechanism to emerging security threats. The forum presents us the opportunity to deliberate on emerging challenges and address the multitude of questions arising from the deployment and transition of peace support operations as well as highlight the way forward. The interest is for us as the African Union with our partners working together to explore all the opportunities to make Africa more secure. The changing nature of conflicts on the continent over the last couple of decades give imperative to this discussion and uh, how it can benefit from all of these to, um, to enhance its uh, full operationalization and utilize, uh, utilization. African Union member states will at the end of the conference draw up new models that will enhance peace and stability in Africa. Selwa Kalil, NTA News. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, has inaugurated the National Technical Working Committee for the development of Nigeria's third action plan on women, peace and security, a brainchild of the UN Women, in collaboration with the Ministry of Women Affairs, to increase women's participation in peace building among member nations. Ngozi Techniku completes this report. The United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 came into effect on October 2000 to demand the protection of women and girls during armed conflicts, recognizing that such feminine groups are most vulnerable in the face of war or other forms of conflict. As one of the 103 countries that developed and adopted National Action Plan on UNSCR 1325 and related resolutions, Nigeria sent out its National Action Plan on five pillars. We are confident that it will capture emerging peace and security issues from femininity, humanitarian and human rights perspective. It creates the enabling environment for the world across and Nigeria specifically for women to be better positioned to contribute to peace building efforts as well as sitting around the table when it comes to reconstruction and redistribution of resources. The 19 member NAP Technical Working Committee have till March 2023 to come up with a blueprint to launch the thought document in Nigeria. Ngozi Technical, NTA News. Time now to join Felicia in Jaws for more stories on Nationwide. Hello, Felicia. And welcome to Jaws.
Pato government has resolved to secure a World Bank grant for sustainable urban rural water supply, sanitation and hygiene program. The resolution was at a meeting in Jos, presided over by Governor Simon Bakulalong. Prisla Grumnan reports. The World Bank project, if secured, will enhance the water sanitation and energy for the people of the state. What they prayed for is to get approval of the Senate Council to enable them and give some consultants that will carry out some designs and works that will serve as a gateway to accessing some grants from the World Bank. Similarly, Commissioner for Secondary Education Elizabeth Wapmuk speaks on the proposed bill for the Gender and Equal Opportunity Commission, which she says when established will tackle the issue of sociocultural discrimination against women. With this type of law now coming into, uh, um, coming into the, the proposed bill now coming into uh, to law, I believe that women will smile. And I thank the state government for that. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. The Nigerian Army says it will sustain training and retraining of its personnel towards optimum performance of their responsibilities. General Officer Commanding Free Division Major General Ibrahim Ali stated this in Jos at the graduation of the 26 participants of Driver's Basic Course. Eric Dungs has details. General Officer Commanding 3 Division, Major General Ibrahim Ali, emphasized that training of the division's personnel is a standard practice that must be maintained. General Ali, who doubles as the commander, Operation Safe Heaven, stated that this year's driver's basic course availed participants the opportunity to sharpen their driving skills considering the present fight against insurgency and other forms of security challenges the country is faced with. The basic course is to enhance the social driving abilities and further build the capacity of drivers within three division areas of responsibility. General Ali reiterated that the training is in line with the Chief of Army Staff's resolve to sharpen the skills of personnel for greater productivity and therefore use the forum to urge the participants to maintain the standard of discipline the force is known for. Certificates were later presented to participants while souvenirs were presented to invited guests. In Jos, Eric Dews, NTA News. Time now for another break. Nationwide continues in Maiduguri shortly after this break. Welcome to Maiduguri on Nationwide. Academic activities have picked up in earnest at the University of Maiduguri as the institution prepares for completion of second semester for the 2020-2021 session. Students are back, fully and, are back fully and anxious to cover lost grounds as a result of the eight-month strike by labor movements on campus. Yamusu Bukar has an update. The University of Meiduguri, which was a shadow of itself, is now back to its normal status, with students trying to rush and meet up the times missed during the eight-month strike. It is now business as usual in the campus, as lectures and other school activities are ongoing, with the second semester examinations expected to commence on the 7th of November. We had already started the examinations before the strike commenced. We had to make sure that things are normalized. And we just had to small courage because at least we want to capture the, the, the welfare of the students. Even though it has not been easy being at home for eight months, according to some students, they however express hope to make up for the period wasted by meeting up with their academic commitments. The most thing that we expended is time. So that uh, I am very happy. I am very happy to meet my friend. I am very happy to finish with, and deal my, with my education. This strike is that it's not like holidays. It can be called up any time and as students, as responsible students, since we know that it can be called up any time, we were visiting our books constantly. It was not quite long we returned back to school and we experienced, uh, you know, immediate uh, tests 
So, and but we thank God. A drive down the university premises shows the usual hustle and bustle at the hotel and even commercial areas have also gained its normal status. It is on record that the eight-month strike action is the worst ever, having disrupted the calendar of universities for 2020-2021 and 2021-2022 academic sessions as they try to make up for the lost time. Ime Duguri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. On to sports, Borno State has received touch of unity light, signifying its commitment to participate in the 2022 edition of the Biennial National Sports Festival expected to commence in Asaba, Delta State, at the end of this month. The Festival of National Unity, promoter of peace and cultural integration, is organized by the federal government through the National Sports Commission. Paul Nkujavana has details. <laughs> The touch of unity light flagged off by President Mahmoud Buhari is expected to go around the 36th state of the Federation, signifying commencement of sport festival scheduled to hold from the 28th of November to 10th of December 2022 in Asaba Delta State. Here in Bano State, the touch of unity light for the 21st edition was received by Representative of Commission of Sport, Youth and Poverty Alleviation, Permanent Secretary Dr. Mamin Melafia, where he expressed government commitment towards making the festival a reality. On behalf of the good people of Warren State, we assure you that we are ready for the festival. The state government has assured us that it will support all our athletes for this coming up festival. Our athletes are ready. We officials are also ready. And by God's grace, we are going to perform better off than the previous year. Despite that, over 18,000 athletes will compete in the post-COVID-19 edition holding Nasaba, Delta State. But no, has qualified in five team sports for the National Sport Festival to include football, hockey, handball, volleyball, and beach soccer. The purpose of, of this particular touch of unity is peace and unity of the country. The touch leave Meduguri for Yola and Amal State before its final leg to kickstart the festival. In Meduguri, Paul in Kujavan. Those are the updates from Meduguri. The rest of the program continues in Abuja with Lydia. Thank you, Mohammed. A book titled The Nigerian Security Dilemma Since 1999 Challenges, Strategic Options, and Way Forward, seeking to explore new dimensions between the nation's security challenges and democratic stability, has been presented to the public. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa was at the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja, venue of the unveiling. Since the return of democracy in 1999, Nigeria has witnessed different security challenges, truncating socioeconomic development, threatening the nation's democratic values. The 598-page book attempts to explore new dimensions between the security challenges and democratic stability. This book is very timely in the sense that it comes off or it offers fresh perspectives and fresh data. The book provides a very neat blend of the theory and practice of the dilemmas of national defense and security in Nigeria. In an effort to provide a proactive means of stemming security threats, the book, a collection of academic papers by different authors, seeks to evaluate security challenges and provide solutions. The solutions to our problems is from within. We can't wait for somebody from outside. But like we've been challenged, we might, we might have to make a compendium of most of the strategies preferred and push it ahead to those who matter so that they can look at what, what the paper is, what the book is saying. Because asking somebody to read 30 something chapters might be too much. But when you have a compendium of what the strategies are all about, it will assist a lot. Other subsequent volumes of the 33 chapter book are expected. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has signed a memorandum of understanding with Save the Children International to ensure effective monitoring of the national security investment programs across the Federation. Elizabeth Omori reports on the essence of the agreement. The agenda to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within 10 years through the national social investment programs is significantly yielding positive results. With a vision getting clearer, the signing of a memorandum of understanding with a non-governmental organization, Save the Children International, is expected 
to foster accountability and transparency through monitoring and evaluation. The Save the Children International will also engage the services of many other civil society organizations. They will also provide additional capacity building. Uh, to the independent monitors that are already in the field, as well as carry out spot uh, checks in locations of the NSIP implementation. Save the Children International, which has been at the forefront of happy social today. protection we programs in Nigeria history. since 2001, says the partnership will also accentuate the delivery of interventions as an effective uh, social accountability uh, mechanism will also help in improving service levels to citizens thereby ensuring that government gets a better return on investment the minister urged all third-party civil society organizations to remain diligent to meet the targets before 2030 in abuja Elizabeth Omori, NC News. Soccer has finally come to more than 5,000 poor and vulnerable people in the Federal Capital Territory. This is in the form of disbursement of stipends and grants to beneficiaries of social transfer and livelihoods under the COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus of the FCT. Musa Abubakar reports. COVID-19 infection may be declining, but the impact on the poor and vulnerable in the society still lingers. Janet Kayode, a mother of three, plays here to support her family. Well, I'll go down, I'll come to the town and make her. Sometimes we even have transport. I'll have to stay on the road. Please, can anybody, please, if I stop it. Janet, along with more than 5,000 poor and vulnerable in the FCT, have now been selected to benefit from the social transfer and livelihood program under the COVID-19 action recovery and economic stimulus of the FCT. The says we want to support people so that they, some of them will be able to create jobs for themselves. People that are in business before, they'll be able to retain people on employment. Give me a fish, they say I eat for a day. Teach me to fish, I'll eat for a lifetime. President Muhammad Buhari is actually teaching us to fish. Hopefully, beneficiaries will eat for their lifetime. Make judicious use of these grants and social transfers that has been given on to them in order to have a complete turnaround to their economic and social status. Congratulations. Beneficiaries of the social transfer are entitled to a stipend of 10,000 naira a month for one year, while the livelihood beneficiaries are qualified for a grant of 50,000 to 135,000 naira, depending on one's business. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, LTA News. Nigerian Export Promotion Council, in its resolve to increase the performance of non-oil exports in the country is meeting with state actors to ensure the promotion and development of grassroots non-oil export across the states of the Federation. Comfort Amodo reports that the NEPC boss Ezra Yakusak is leading the drive to stimulate Nigeria's economy and foreign exchange earnings. Nigerian's non-oil export performance has been on the onward movement within the last year all thanks to the sustained efforts of the federal government to diversify the nation's economy through the Nigerian Export Promotion Council Export for Survival Program for an inclusive and sustained economy. One state, one product program is the latest strategy the NEPC has designed to expand and develop non-oil export at the grassroots level. This meeting between the NEPC and Council for the Chairman and Secretaries of the State Committee on Export Promotion is to ensure the implementation of the one state, one product at the grassroots. What we are saying is that a state may have maybe 5, 10, 20, 30 products, but we concentrate on one for maximum impact or maximum benefit. The state actors are aligning with the NEPC's agenda for each state of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, focusing on at least one product to develop for export. We are working on uh, a rise onions, 
uh, mostly perishable items actually we are working and uh, uh, we have the markets and we are promoting some crops especially tomato to be exported the NEPC is also in synergy with the National Orientation Agency to strengthen non oil export at the grassroots in Abuja, Comfort, Amodu, NTA News. The governor of Ebony State, Chief David Umahi, has emphasized the importance of census to national planning and development. Governor Umahi was speaking at Stakeholder Summit on the 2023 Population and Housing Census in Abakaliki, aimed at ensuring that key players are on board towards the success of the exercise. Caleb Ogunna reports. In order to ensure a stimulus exercise, Stakeholders Summit on 2023 Population and Housing Census was organized with key players on the project met to understand the importance of playing their roles well for a reliable, credible, and acceptable census come April 2023. The governor of Ebony State, David Omahi, urged the people to ensure that they get enumerated as having the right data and demography helps in development. When that the Commission of the Merits Committee to the conduct of the credit and acceptable census that will be jumping information and meet international standards. Our goal in the 2023 population and health census is that everyone will be counted. Thereafter, the event proceeded to a technical session where the Commission's preparedness, modalities, recruitment, and commitment were further discussed by stakeholders. In Abakaliki, Kelebu Bunna, NTA News. Next report from Akure says, Ondo State Governor Oluwaruti Miyakele Dolu has signed into law the state multi-door courthouse bill. The law will provide easy access to justice which is in line with global trends in alternative dispute resolution. Abiola Ario reports. The new law also aims at rekindling the hope of the people of the judiciary, just as Governor Luarutu Miyakere Dolu commends members of the Undo State House of Assembly and the judiciary for the synergy. This development no doubt will speed up judicial matters and ease burden on judges. I encourage people to go to the multi-door courthouse. The few things to go to is my fault. Then I go. You have more than enough. I don't need to, to, to say you have the most dear case. The bill was passed on the 9th of August 2022 with the subject matter conflict resolution. It is a long time procedure whereby the case is brought before the court and to take a longer time, two, three, four years. This will be about. When the court is going to a mediation or reconciliation, no doubt, and we don't be talking about it, no one will suffer any form of it. So the better we promote it. The multi door courthouse law will provide alternative dispute resolution settlement out of court in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NTA News. In a bid to support people diagnosed with various forms of cancer in Benue, wife of the state governor, Dr. Eunice Otom, has, has donated a sum of 6.5 million naira to about 20 patients for their treatment and care. She made the donation through her pet project, Eunice Spring of Life Foundation, during an awareness outreach in Makudi. Simbiat Agwaji reports. According to medical experts, one among eight persons is diagnosed with various forms of cancer. The most common cancers are breast cancer, cervical cancer, prostate cancer, and cancer of the uterus, among others. As a result of the growing cases of cancer and the burden on cancer patients, the wife of the Benue State Governor, through her pet project, donated cash to alleviate the financial burden on them. Um, I wish to continue to let our people appreciate that 
a healthy living and active uh, lifestyle is also very important to the prevention of this disease. I'm really grateful that this 500,000 Naira given to me will go a long way in helping me on this journey. I thank the First Lady because the money she has given me, she has given me 250,000. I believe it will cover the cost of the surgery. Consultant oncologist Dr. Samuel Uteni has advised the general public to go for regular medical examination. I always say that every family or at least the majority of families in Nigeria she also visited Federal Medical Center and Benue State University Teaching Hospital all in Makudi, where she also rendered assistance to some cancer in patients. In Makudi, Simbiat Agbaji, NTA News. 51 engineers have been conferred with the Nigerian Society of Engineers Fellowship Award in a colorful ceremony attended by engineering top-notch across the nation. Ike Chukundukwe reports that the Fellowship Award in Engineering is a recognition for a senior role with significant autonomy. At the occasion, a lecture on the way forward for the ravaging flood in Nigeria was delivered. They are the brains in the Nigerian setting of the engineers. The fellows are people who have established themselves, who have shown that they have learned their practice, the art and the science of engineering. So these are the elite group of engineers. And we have uh, sufficient information to do certain things that can reduce the flooding in Nigeria, basically. Because before you do that, you must understand the behavior of water, especially surface, as well as groundwater. So that's what we are trying to understand. I want to use this opportunity to tell them that uh, I would continue to foster the interest of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Now that I'm a fellow, I would also contribute my quarter to the development of the engineering profession in Nigeria. This year's conferment is unique as our days were tasked to provide solution to issues of flooding and the imminent building collapses that may arise due to the flooding. Among dignitaries at the occasion is the NTA Executive Director of Engineering, Moses Okpanachi. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency has announced that the 2022 rainy season has come to an end in the northern part of the country. This, the agency therefore confirmed the commencement of the dry season, otherwise known as the Hamatan season, in most parts of the north. To this end, Medugri, Yobe, Katsina, Kano, Kaduna, Gombe, Bauchi, and Jigawa states in the next 24 hours will experience dust and haze with moderate visibility of about 200 to 500 meters. Other northern states, including North Central, could report sunny and hazy visibility of between 5 to 7 kilometers. Limet predicts that this weather condition will persist for the next three days. People with respiratory issues are therefore advised to apply necessary caution, especially for outdoor activities. Airline operators are also advised to get updated weather reports from NIMET offices for effective planning of their operations. Next is sports. Flamingos have been tasked not to rest on their oars in a bid to become world stars after their third place finish at the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup in India. The team, which arrived the country Tuesday to a reception in Abuja, were assured of federal government support. As a ministry, we will approach Mr. President. We will seek an appointment for you to meet with Mr. President when he returns. Also, you know that when you meet with a father and you've done well, there will be some reward. Thank you for hosting us also. 
And thank you to all Nigerians for supporting us throughout the World Cup. Our foundation see these girls thrive and succeed in the passion that they have chosen to pursue. We can't but just encourage them. In another development, Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, Abdul Hamid Dembos, has reiterated commitments to transmit Nigerian Football League. The DG disclosed this during a meeting with the Interim Management Committee of the League, chaired by Benga Elegbele. We have assured them that uh, we are ready and uh, we have all it takes to partner with them to, to bring to uh, the reality or actuality of what they have come to achieve. Uh, for too long, Nigerians have been yearning for a time like this when the local matches will be, will be on television live. Our own league is not shown anywhere to the world. And we feel we should start by coming to the NTA and find a way to collaborate with them first. Away from football, Handball Premier League team Confluent Stars calls for transparency in the administration of the sport as contradictions emerge at the ongoing league set to climax in Lagos Wednesday. This is coming following a protest against the ineligibility of a Kano Pillars player at the second phase of the league in Lagos with Chris Ogedengbe contravening provisions of Article 3, Sections A to D. Sport is being killed by the so-called people we call presidents of federations. And the minister, the permanent secretary, may not know what is going on in, fed, in sporting federations. People take their personal aggrandizement to take to the sport. The club, which gained promotion into the Premier League two seasons ago, is a regular competitor in the North Central Handball League. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News. And that completes Nationwide. Thank you for being a part of this bulletin. I am Lydia Odijochi, but before we go, don't forget to join NTA in the campaign against rape and rapists. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.